Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons, like diamonds. Got Luke Simons, like diamonds. What's up, dude? Man, here and pumped to talk about tackle. Man, talking about lures in particular. So I was in our new tackle store. If you guys don't know, we opened up a brand new physical tackle store. It's pretty awesome. We had over a thousand people come to the grand opening. And uh, just the other day, I was in there and one of our incident members came in who had driven quite some ways, which uh, I won't mention his name because I don't have his permission to, but I was showing him what just came out, which is the skinny lipper. Oh, I got a hook caught up in here. So the skinny lipper is our new hard bait. And he's like, all right, I'm getting one of these. And he's like, he's like I got to go ahead and question that. He's like, you know, I'm a little bit newer. He's like, I came from up north, you know, mostly a lot of bass fishing. And I'm a little bit newer at all this. He's like, can you just simplify it for me on when I should choose different lures based on depth, based on the situation? You know, we have, we have talked about different structure. So, for instance, you know, we talk a lot about power prawn. That's one of your favorites. I love Slam Shady 2.0 and the Slam Shady Mulligan. I know you've been using the Mulligan a lot, too. And we now have this. Uh, Alabama Leprechaun with the Jerk Shed. So his question was, all right, like, when when do I select each one to maximize the amount of strikes I'm going to get? And I was like, man, this would be a perfect podcast. We do have a cheat sheet, by the way. And so maybe, Luke, we'll even pull that up here. I, I think we should and kind of go over that, that we have that for our members. Um, but um, what's what's your simple answer? Is it depth? I, I know you're big on, on depth first, right? Yeah, depth control is crucial. Um, and as I, I've tested a lot of different lures where I'm testing different colors of the same lure. Or like a paddle tail versus a shrimp where it's just, you know, one's a bait fish imitation, one's a shrimp. And as long as the lures are are really covering the, the similar depth, it, I, I've yet to see one, one catch fish and the other one not catch fish. So, so if the problem is not catching any fish, it's not going to be the lure. It's, it's, it's really, it's more likely it's either you're in a bad spot, that, that should be the, the first uh, assumption. But if you're if you're seeing fish in the air, you're seeing signs of life. There's birds diving. There's bait fish. There's life holding near areas with structure, which is where the where most of the redfish, snook, and trout will be holding areas near structure with food is is almost always going to have predators. So if you're in a good spot and you're seeing that, and you're still not catching fish, if you just change from one lure that's going at a, at a two foot depth to another lure that's going two foot depth, the odds of it making a difference are pretty small. Um, you, depth control is number one. That's always the the factor that I consider before ever making a lure ch a lure change. Um, and there are some instances like if the bait fish are are really small, like if you're fishing area and you've seen a lot of life, and you're using a lure, like okay, I know I'm in the right zone depth wise, and I'm still not getting strikes. The 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 difference is often size. So this is a, a this is just the remnants of a of a power prawn USA Junior. Here's the full one for those uh, for those watching, but it's, it comes in three and a half inches, and I've had some really good catches, even slot snook, like even upper slot snook and juvenile tarpon, hitting this little nub. We call it the nub, and the only it's not anything fancy, right? It's just a shrimp with the tail pulled off, but it was it was designed just to make it be the similar size as the food that the fish were honed in on. So depth control number one, number two, then you start thinking about size. Like if, if that's not working, try a different size. Um, for, for years, I would just go and go from one lure to the other. And my tackle box was just overflowing with lures. And now I use way fewer lures than I ever did before. I just make those little small tweaks. And, uh, and now I'm catching way more fish than I ever used to. Do, do you consider retrieve on depth? For instance, I know you had a, a great report in the insider community recently where you, you were, you saw fit, you knew fish were there. Yeah. And you just weren't connecting. And I know you changed up the retrieve is what I, I'm pretty sure I remember you, you uh, reporting on, which yeah, also so I, does change the depth, right? Well, I violated my own rule. So the depth was right. Like I could, <laughs> I was fishing at night. The water was clear. I could see some big snook and I finally got a, I finally got one to eat. But, but what I was doing is so I could see the snook were in about two and a half feet of water. I can literally see them there. And so I was bouncing lures around them going right, right next to them. And they just these weren't weren't hidden. And I I switched to um, I started with the power prawn with the jig head. This is the exact the exact combo. The power prawn USA original with a quarter ounce football jig. This is from Haas. This is my trust most trusted for dock fishing and for fishing at night. And so I went with it, and they weren't hitting it. So I was like, oh man, 
uh, I could see the depth. I was bouncing the bottom, so I couldn't go any deeper. And so then I switched over to a paddle tail. Okay, maybe they're maybe they're going on small little bait fish. So I moved a paddle tail with the with the weighted hook to to basically buzz on top of them. I also tried her skinny lipper. This is the new lure that we uh, literally just came out with, and this was just okay. Maybe they need something loud. So I was I was buzzing it right right over them. They didn't move. They didn't move at all. And so I was like, oh man, like I I just gotta. I got to go back to what I know, what I trust. So I just trust the power prawn, this, this, this first one that I went with that they already denied. They already denied it many times. There was four of them there and they were kind of moving around too. And so I was like, the only thing I haven't done is just a really slow bouncy, like a, a really slow lethargic movement on the bottom before I was taking it kind of fast. And they all of a sudden started smacking it. Now I've literally, I've never, I've never hooked that many big snook in a short period of time. It was insane. I, I was only able to keep one of them from the, uh, from the the pilings uh but but yeah that all of a sudden it was just a, the same exact lure that I denied many times before i just changed the retrieve and, and that was really the ticket so i think a lot of mistakes that even you know i make even though i preach against it but i, I see it all the time where people go, oh yeah i went out fishing and i and i've tried you know 20 different lures and and in, in most cases they're all usually going to be a little bit too shallow like the, the most common thing is they're trying top water or popping corks with a shrimp under it when they're in like eight feet of water. And so unless the fish are really aggressive, they're not going to come off the bottom to eat. So that's, that's just like an easy low hanging fruit. Okay. That's a, that's something that needs to be fixed. But in many cases, it's something small like that, where depth control is always number one. Then number two, once you get that depth, once you can see them, you know, the right depth, then, okay, like, let me, let me change the retrieve or, or change the size. Like that's when you kind of get into the lower level stuff, but de the depth control is by far the most important. That's good. So I, I'm, I'm really interested with these big snook. I'm sure other people are too. So you were, were you just doing like a, like a, like an actual pause, like not moving it at all. And then what would yeah. you do? Yeah. So I was doing, I was just getting this rod tip up so I could feel everything about just do a, a slight little jump, just to, just to bump it just off the bottom and let it settle back down and I let it sit for how like, long i mean not, not, not like it felt like it was five seconds but it was probably <laughs> like a, maybe a two second count two or three seconds but I'd let, at least let it sit and actually sit there and then i bump it again and i actually the first one it, it was coming towards me so i could see and i was just it was like right here and i was just bouncing it right up along the side of it. I, I saw him just kind of turn and, and just make a little a little stab at it and it missed and i was like oh my gosh okay i got it and then that's when i started doing that retrieve down that line and then i started just it, it was literally like every cast. I would hook one, either jump off, then I broke one off, retied, and it was literally within the first two casts. So wow. as soon as I dialed in that retrieve, it went from not getting any strikes to getting a strike almost every cast. And all of them were big. It, it was uh, the small ones were hitting the faster retrieves up under the lights. This was off to the side. Those bigger ones were hanging out there and they did not want anything fast. It was just nice and slow. And as long as they saw that, they were smacking it. That's so cool. It's awesome when you get them dialed in like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's rare. Again, it's, it's in most, in many days, you can, you know, if the fish are really feeding, they're going to chase down lures and you can, you can have uh, just a, a kind of a bad lure or have a, a lure not even rigged properly and still catch fish. It's there's, there's always going to be those days that if they don't see exactly what they're looking for, you're not going to catch anything. And those are the days that, that really apply to what we're talking about when we're di diving into the weeds. Um, and that's, and also obviously when those fish are really biting, you'll catch more when you pay attention to the details, but just from going to a skunk or not skunk, it's going to be those days where the fish are going to be a little bit more lethargic. You had that podcast with, uh, I can't remember who that was with, it made a really good point where there was like of the 30 days of the month, there's going to be X amount that is just going to be good. And you can make a ton of mistakes and kill, still catch fish. And there's always going to be that that percentage that it's going to be tough. And unless you actually do stuff properly, you're not going to catch anything. Yep. That was Captain Mike Anderson. That's right. Yep. So, all right. So going back to the question that one of our members had, now that we have skinny lipper and power prawn, and let's just say slam shady paddle tails, when do you choose each one? How do you instantly know on a given situation, depth, et cetera, time of year, that you're going to just, all right, this is the one I'm going to, I'm going to start with here. Yeah. So my shortcut is to start with depth. I don't make any decision until I know what depth I'm going to be using. Like if I'm going to be fishing the reefs for a grouper or, or snook out of 30 feet of water, that's going to be a big difference if I'm fishing up along some mangroves in two feet of water. 
So depth is depth uh, is always number one. And then once I think of, once I get the depth, okay, I'm gonna fish. Let's just stick with the the flats, which is where most of our listeners uh, fish. Talking about inshore, either bays, rivers, creeks. If we're fishing up along a shoreline of either mangroves or oysters, and it's gonna be going from like one feet of water down to three, and there and there's oysters or at least some sort of structure on the bottom, which is hopefully most of the case. That's where most of the predators are. Now, okay, I, I need to, I need, I know two things. I know two things. Number one is I need to have a lure that runs fairly shallow. I, like I, I've said, I can't be dragging or bouncing the bottom too much because I'm going to get snagged either on the oysters or I'm going to snag seagrass and now I'm going to wreck my chances of catching anything. So I need something that's shallow running. And then number two, uh, factor in the the conditions. If it's if it's like a, a, a calm day where there's like, there's no wind, there's no clouds, uh, there's there's not much current flow, that's a time where I automatically know, okay, I don't care what they're feeding on. I'm going to use something that doesn't have much vibration. So this is when, that's when, you know, if you even throw in paddle tails, I'm, sometimes if it's super calm, although I love paddle tails, that's my default across the board when all else is failing, this is go-to. But if it's super calm and clear, even the vibration from these little paddle tails can be too much and set these fish off, especially if you're fishing areas like, uh, like Tampa Bay, where I'm at. Um, it gets a lot of pressure and those fish at the, at the first sign of anything weird, anything different, they're gone. So naturally when everything's calm, the, the natural prey aren't making much noise because they'd be gone if they were, they'd be eaten quickly. And so they automatically know, okay, that's not natural. I'm swimming off. So when it's super calm, that's when I basically default to a, either a shrimp lure, like the power prawn, or I go to a jerk shad. Uh, I don't even have one here because I've been using shrimp so much lately. But I, I lately I've just been going to the shrimp the shrimp profile. Uh, I feel like my average fish uh, size has been bigger when I when I'm using this, and I just do a nice straight retrieve, not much vibration. Again, it's all about just having a natural uh, a natural movement. The fact that anything's moving is going to catch the fish's attention. You don't need to have rattles. You just want to you want to be able to catch their attention without spooking them. So I default to something again low vibration. If that's not working, right? If, if I actually see them look at it. And then and then not eat, or if I if I'm in an area where I can just see fish and they're not eating it, that's when I'll now start changing them. Okay, maybe they want a, a bait fish imitation versus a shrimp. But in most cases, as long as I as long as I have the the right jig head or weighted hook, where I'm not dragging the bottom, but I'm also not just floating way way above the bottom. I want to be just just above the bottom. If the if the grass is there, kind of going right up above the seagrass blades. If there's oysters, right up above the oyster shells. The, the closer we can get to these predators where they don't have to work very hard to eat it, the more likely they're going to, they're going to take a swipe at it. So, um, so yeah, long story short, uh, low vibration, uh, I should say a, a calm, clear days, low vibration. And then if it's the opposite, right, if there's a lot of uh, water movement, if it's windy, that's when always go with paddle tail. It's hard to be the paddle tail when it's windy. And if it's super windy, that's when you know, if it's, if it's really churned up, that's when I go to the, the hard plastics, either top water or now the skinny leopard. So, uh, but this is only for the shallow stuff. This is awesome for shallow, like under two feet of water. This thing's flat out awesome. Uh, but again, tried and true, it's tough to beat a paddle tail on a weedless hook. Yep. And that skinny lipper is really good when you're in areas that just have tons of junk fish. Like if, you know, we've had those days yep. where you, you lose seven slam shadies you know from puffer fish and lady fish and stuff just tearing them up before you get a, a you know a keeper or whatever you're going for and uh i i used to use a gold spoon i like this a whole lot better uh personally um man this the thing's pretty uh, pretty neat yeah it casts far into the wind and because it, it, it just launches um and, and it, it gets a lot of attention but again i i still although i still do the skin lipper has been has been working well. Like if I want to, if I really want to get a topwater bite, which I which I love doing, um, on a calm day, this is the best option for topwater. Uh, granted, again, we have we have topwaters as well, so I'm not bashing topwaters. I love them. Here's the Moonwalker. I've been doing some hook changes with it, but uh, that's a great lure. But if it's if it's flat calm, and especially if there's clear water and you're fishing high pressure areas, they're not gonna they're gonna be spooking off. Um, whereas this has way less vibration in the water and uh and can get their attention without spooking them so this is this is now my favorite top water for calm water but again in most cases when it's calm i'm doing subsurface where i'm gliding 
on gliding something with uh, with very little vibration. Cool. All right. So what about a little bit deeper? So the conversation with this gentleman went on to say, hey, what about when I'm fishing docks or around little, uh, you know, little jetties, not like an inlet or a past jetty, but, you know, just like a, a little small, a bunch of rocks in a, in a opening of a, of a big canal or something like that. What, what are you going that has a little bit more depth? What are you using? So, so same thing. If I, if I need depth, so same, same thing though, as far as paddle tail versus shrimp. So, so this is a little bit, uh, I guess we'll, we'll use these two lures. So paddle tail versus shrimp, right? Same thing where, if it's calm and clear and there's not much vibration, that's where the shrimp is just hard to beat. You know, shrimp are usually in inshore waterways throughout the year. Um, fish, fish love them. They're easy to catch. And, and so it's really about, okay, let me just get a lure and then first of all, decide what to rig it with. Can I, whatever lure I want to use, can I get it down to the depth that I need? Ideally without getting snagged. So you mentioned, you mentioned deeper water. So if it's deeper water, where there's not a lot of snags, then these regular traditional jig heads are awesome. Again, these are those hospital balls that I love for both power prongs and for paddle tails. Um, they're, they're awesome. But if there's if there's rocks like fishing in a jetty now, now I, I don't ever use these open open style hooks for fishing around jetties because you just lose a ton of gear. It's a huge frustration. And so now I'm using what's called, these are the, the weedless football jigs. These are again, uh, made from hops as well. And these things have been a game changer for me where now I can, I can purposely bounce right into all the, all the structure. I can bounce off the boulders, uh, fishing near shore reefs, which is what I use this one for. It has a, a three quarter ounce weight, um, fishing 30 feet of water, just bouncing through the rubble, which most people don't ever do with lures. So those fish aren't used to seeing something not natural, like right down there in the thick of things. This has been awesome. Catching cobia, grouper, snook, uh, it has been shockingly good and it rarely ever gets snagged, which is the coolest part. So fishing deep structure, again, boulders, anything hard, uh, bridges. I've been doing a lot of night fishing at bridges with this. It has been amazing. I can literally like, I can purposely go up current of the fender and then feel it hit the fender and then go over it and just drop it. And that thump happens right then. So those snook are holding right, but right behind those fenders. But but being able to fish deep deep structure without getting snagged on the bottom is is the game changer. This is the biggest the biggest uh, I should say impact on my fishing game over the last six months is being able to fish that deep structure without the frustration of getting snagged all the time. And that's the Hoss football style weedless jig head. Yeah, yeah, Hoss weedless. And here's let me just so you can see what what it's made of. So here is one. I have my my trusty. My most valuable uh, part of the tackle bag here underneath me, but it's basically it's like a worm hook with a swinging football jig attached to it, so that you have the weight, you know, the weight of a jig head to get down there deep, but then you have this worm hook where you can rig it so that it's super weedless. You can even dig dig the hook point into the lure, so it's super weedless while you're able to get down there right into the thick of things where where those fish are are usually you know, not too, not too skittish where usually their, their history of feeding right up against the structure is that it's going to be something, it's going to be something natural. So, so that's been, again, for me, that's been the biggest change, but, but either way, regardless, number one is depth control. Number two, and we actually have this, this guide, I'll, uh, I'll pop this up. Yeah. Let's pull up that uh, cheat sheet. I might need your permission to, uh, to do the sharing. Oh boy. This is uncomfortable. Luke yeah. has no zoom permissions. But yeah, so so depth control number one, and then number two is: Do I need to be weedless or do I not need to be weedless? I would be lying if I said that you need to be weedless all the time, right? Because because there's always a trade off. When you go weedless, you're gonna you're gonna have a, a, a worse performing hookup ratio, so you're definitely gonna lose some hookups. But the 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 pros, if you're fishing around rocks, around reefs around the bridge pilings, around dock pilings, if you're if you're actually getting into the thick of things a lot, the the benefits of just not getting snagged all the time and having to change lures and going through gear far outweighs the couple strikes you're gonna miss. You're you're gonna you're gonna catch way more fish than you otherwise would have for all the time you're saving on not having to re-rig. So so we made this just given how important this is, uh we made this this guide here for those following you can see it. If you're not following, you want to check it out. You can just go 
So saltstrong.com and use the search bar and just look for lure depth guide, like or lure depth rigging, anything like that, you'll see it. Or you can probably do a Google search. But what it does is it goes through for all of our core lures. And again, a lot of these lures are similar to the other lures on the market. So you can still use it for uh, for non salt strong stuff. But it goes through all the traditional jig heads for each lure at every given depth range. And the green means that this is the best combination for the specific depths. So we'll just go here. We were talking about the power prawns. So we can we can go and uh and check this out. So for the power prawns on a traditional jig head, meaning non-weedless, where we we don't have to, we're not fishing hard structure, we don't have to 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 make a priority of being weedless. Then I would just go down, okay. I need to to fish. Uh, where's the power prong? I lost it. Okay. Well, I need to fish uh, one to three feet of water. I go down, find the one to three feet of water that's green. And now I automatically know I need, I need the Haas football jig and the one eighth ounce size with the four out hook. So it just, it just does all the work for you. Uh, over time, obviously you learn it, but if if you're new and you want to go through and, and just make sure that you're, you're using the optimal setups, the optimal rigging for your soft plastics for the specific depths, this is your guide for doing so. And then same same thing, right? If I want to if I want to go down the weedless route, now I I just could scroll down to the bottom section, weedless jigs and, and weighted hooks, and same thing, right? Look for the the specific depths, and then go over to the left, and you'll see your rigging option. Some of these go up to a hundred feet, huh? That's awesome. Yeah, I mean that's where we have uh, we have some two ounces of these these weedless footballs, and they will get down even deeper than that. I haven't even launched those yet. I probably shouldn't have even said it. Oh, but, but, um, yeah, we got a lot of requests for them because it's we've had guides who were swearing by the Power Prawn USA on on you know uh, big jig heads like that in 40, 50, 60, 70 feet of water. We've done it multiple times on video. It's it's nuts the fish that we're catching. Yeah, it's, and I've again I've been out to the these reefs off St. Pete multiple times for the when the cobra were biting. And and out fishing the live bait guys almost every time like it was, they were all over the power prawns because again live bait as soon as that bait that now that bait has control and, and it's really hard to rig a live bait weedless so they're they're dropping down the bottom and then that bait will get down into some of the rubble now you're snagged and now you're having to reel back up and change your line whereas balancing the the weedless power prawn on the bottom you're you're actually fishing the whole time you're not you're not wasting time re rigging and uh, and yeah it is. You know, had you asked me five years ago if I'd ever be using anything other than the best live bait possible on the reefs, I would have said no way. Like I wouldn't even gone out without without the great live bait. Now I don't even bother with live bait at all. I just shoot straight out there. Um, most of the time, this is working. In the rare cases, it doesn't. Uh, if that usually means they're they're feeding on threadfin, I'll just drop a subiki out there and catch threadfin right on the reef. But uh, but that's rare. You know, I basically just go with that and. And it's uh, been very rare where it doesn't pay off. Cool. Yeah, this chart is uh, super helpful. Definitely use it, print it. I know some people have it laminated just to keep on their uh, on their boat, their tackle bag. It's a uh, man. And we have a lot of this stuff, uh, just so you know. I mean, we have, obviously, for Insider members, we have a whole library of cheat sheets and stuff that we don't take public. We have all kinds of different little mini courses on using all these different soft plastics and live bait. We have mini courses on specific species. We have the full mastery courses. There's so much stuff. Use the search bar is my best recommendation. Luke touched on it earlier. We could go back up at the top so someone could see where it is. Um, yep, right there. That search, like we we we've really, really refined the search at saltstrong.com to find, I think we have like 4,000 or something posts and videos over the eight years we've been doing this. So it's a lot. And this search tool is so helpful because I see a lot of the same questions in the community, you know, that come up for new members and, you know, it's like, all right, search for it real quick and boom, you can find it so fast. So definitely use the search tool. It is really, really spot on. Yeah, and, and uh, I just wanted to, to mention this too before I forgot about it. If you're looking to get better at lures and you want to you want to do so with the least amount of of clutter and investment as possible, make sure to check out this inshore fishing cheat sheet. So this says the cheat sheet also talks about the rods, reels, and lines, but but in here it talks about the, the core 
obviously the core equipment you need. The rods and reels is separate. Um, if you need rod and reel, we have a bundle that you can get it for the best performing that we found for the value. But then when we get down to lures, we have a, a little bundle. And this includes the, the bundle that you need to be able to cover the different depths that, that most of us are using, where it's like usually eight to, to you know eight feet of water or shallower to cover all those depths. And you have options for bait fish or shrimp on different sizes. And it's all, everything, all the rigging is optimized for the lures. And then also um, when you get down to the bottom, you can just see the, the times when each one is best, right? And this is actually available to you right now. You can go to our, our shop, uh, go to saltron.com, I should say, and just just type in fishing equipment cheat sheet, and you'll see this post. And it you know, starts with the 2.0. Here's It's just all purpose. And then, hey, if you're fishing the air with bigger bait fish, then try the bigger paddle tail. And it basically goes down the checklist. Um, and same for the Power Prone USA, right? Um, the fish are running or if it's, if it's calm out, it, it just goes through all the details. So again, super important. Uh, again, for, for many years, a big mistake that we were making, and I, I feel like a lot of people do the same thing where we were really good bass anglers and, and all of our bass gear, we were using, we were using lures and like never, never not had the confidence of catching fish. Yep. Right. We were able to cast well, we at least kind of knew how to, how to match a lure to the situation, but for whatever reason, salt water, we wouldn't fish unless we had a blackout live well. We we're full of great bait fish. And for years did that. And not even not not, not even question if it was a smart move or not. Yeah. Just because we thought like everybody we knew was using my bait. So uh, by definition, lures must not work. And and now that I've been using lures a long time, I realized that saltwater fish are way more aggressive than bass. So if, if you can catch lures, or you can catch bass with lures you definitely can catch saltwater fish with lures. It's just all about just getting at least, at least decent at matching the lure to the to the conditions. And when I say conditions, I'm talking about the conditions of the area that you're fishing. Depth number one, and then and then just get the uh, the vibration the vibration down. And as uh, your bait fish or shrimp, if you can just get a couple, get two of those three variables right, you're going to be catching a bunch of fish consistently. If you can get all three right, now you're catching fish even when others aren't. Uh, yep. But it just just getting one or two right is a is just a huge benefit. Can you go back to that uh, last that last post? Well, I got a question. It's a pretty important one. Who's this? Uh, well, no, yeah, who's this girl that looks like you on here? <laughs> the girl with the beard, the bearded, yeah, the bearded broad. <laughs> Dude, look at that pixie cut you got there. Huh? That's, nice. that's, uh, that's impressive. That's that's what COVID does to you, Joe. Oh man. Yeah, the good old days. yeah uh yeah so yeah look look to the oh you right back where you so on the thing on the right hand side is you with literally no mullet oh that's funny yeah that's pretty funny if you scroll down it was kind of yeah this looks like the the caddy and uh that uh billy madison it does <laughs> So uh, yes, as far as finding these things, again, the, the the two things you want to find number one is the uh the guide for rigging, so lure. Uh, Lua rigging guide. We'll just search for that. Click that little search bar, and here, uh, here it is, right there, the the one with the the red image. So click on that, and we see that. And if we want to go to the equipment cheat sheet, all right, just type in equipment cheat sheet, and now we'll get taken to that to that other post that we saw before, right here, the one with all the gear on it. So all the stuff there at your fingertips. Uh, again, uh, we know how how tough it can be uh, when when the just the consistency isn't there and and the odds that you're that you're taking the time to to listen to this video or watch this video means that you have the drives to do it that you definitely can it's just a matter of just again just just starting to put those pieces of the puzzle together a little bit quicker and yep. uh and this this cheat sheet and, and that rigging guide the combination of these two uh is something i wish we would have had access to years before it would have saved us a ton of time and money just dealing with lures that weren't properly situated for the spots that we were fishing. Yep. So like, I can't recommend it enough to uh, just spend a little bit of time and go through those. And make sure to add Dr. Juice saltwater slam sent to all your lures. Something that we're doing all the time. We've got people who are swearing by it all over the country now. And um, I mean, we're doing a tournament here pretty soon. You better believe we're going to be, lathering that stuff up in the dr juice it just it just flat out works and been proven to, to work and then the other part you'd mentioned though if 
even if you nail the lure thing, right, if you're in a bad spot, you know, we talk about the 90 10 zone, then, you know, it's time to move spots. So there is a time to move spots as well. That's a whole nother discussion. That's why we have smart fishing spots and smart fishing tides even talks about the best day and the time of day to maximize your strikes. All that is for our members only uh, there at the insider club. So if you want access to that, make sure to come join us. We just hit a 43,000 members here this week pretty wild uh how fast it's growing so thank i know a lot of members listen to this as well thank you guys so much and uh keep referring your friends if you haven't joined once again go to saltstraw.com it is complete no-brainer you will save time and save money on your tackle or you don't pay for the membership it's a pretty cool guarantee so uh I, we would love to see you in there Any, anything else to add to this one luke no, yeah, that covers it. Yeah, again, if if you're not catching fish, in, in most cases, it's not getting the right spot at the right time. And that's where the club comes into play, where it just helps the software and the, the mastery courses will just make sure that that you're putting yourself in the right spot as as, uh, as often as possible. And then once you're there, then again, that lure selection, make sure to check out these cheat sheets, use the information. It, it is proven to work. We, know, we have members across the entire Southeast from Texas all the way up to even Virginia and beyond who are using these same lures with the same, the same strategies as far as when to select each one across different regions, different water clarities, the fish is a fish is a fish, right? A redfish yeah. is, is going to behave the same way regardless of where you are. So yeah, don't, don't worry about, Hey, my region is not in Tampa Bay that we've talked about a couple of times. It doesn't matter if you're going after redfish, sea trout, snooker, flounder, this stuff will absolutely apply to you. And, and uh, again, we, it's just, our members have proven it across the Southeast. So yeah, please don't let the, the, the regional, per, per, you know, the potential regional difference, um, you know, be, a, be something that, that doesn't let you take the next step forward. And yeah, as and, said, and, right, we, we guarantee, right? we, we're confident it works. We, we guarantee it. So get through there. If you, somehow you don't think it all works. Just let us know and we'll refund the money. It's not just the Southeast anymore. I mean, heck now we have rich, we have a full-time coach up in the Northeast and it's, yeah. it's just really from Texas up to, New York, uh, all this stuff is just proven to continue to work. So we got, you know, John Skinner now for you, uh, Northeastern anglers. Skinner has now joined us in the in the club and starting to create some content here. Uh, so a lot of cool stuff happening. So come join us there in the Insider Club. Salt's run to come. Otherwise, we'll talk to you guys on the next episode. Peace.